nation, this next battle is three five minute rounds in a catch weight of 80 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and four losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 78 kilograms. Representing Gladiator Hurkev Jim and fighting out of the Ukraine by way of Azerbaijan. Please welcome Vagif Askarov. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and three losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 80 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Ilas and fighting out of Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome Abdi Salam Ulu Omuk Kupa. Big respect to this man, and it is on. Abdi Salam pointed to the middle of the cage during the introduction from the Roaring Lion as if to say, this is where we will meet, this is where I want you, and here he goes. As we say, nine wins by KO or TKO, has dynamite in his hands, completely separated Xiao Paulo Rodriguez from his senses and his last outing. Aesthetically looks to be the much bigger man. Buggy Phil is a very fast fighter. He doesn't, cannot match power for power with Omak, however. Bagif needs a little bit more space behind him. He needs a little space to back up if necessary, or that's what happens. Spinning back fist attempt. Abdi Salam began his career with three straight submission wins, and that was in January of 2016, but since then has fallen in love with the striking. As we say, accrued nine wins via KO or TKO. Incredible single attempt by Bagif. Ho! Superman attempt off the cage into a low double. And now Abdi Salam trying to get the hooks in. Has one hook in. Into the side control position. And he seems to be happy here just to push down on the knee of Vagif and perhaps transition. But good work from Askarov to try and get that guard back. Vagif has now closed that guard. He's got an overhook in the arm. He probably is going to try and control his opponent's head now. At that point, he can start to work to take the back, to sweep, to wait for a stand-up, to throw some strikes, but the first order of business is keeping himself safe. Thus far, he has accomplished exactly that. Just trying to rule that rest out, trying to get away from that grip, but needs to be wary of the, the elevation of the hips. Askarov looked as if he was going for an arm bar on the wrong side there. Right now, you may just see Abdi Salam posture up and try and get off some strikes. Phil, we've seen up, we've seen Omak in positions before where it appeared that uh, he might be getting submitted, but he's got a brilliant sense of the, the, the centimeters that leave him at a point of safety or a point of danger. He really always keeps himself safe. Askarov no. has that knee shield. He's trying to get onto your hip. He's trying yeah. to shrimp out, but as a result, he had some nasty elbows there. Again, Abdi Salam just trying to free his wrists and then land some ground points. Omak may be looking to attack the ribs for a while now. Head's well covered. Bagif doing an excellent job of covering that head. May try oh, and here switch we come. for may Choke try, coming. May try and switch for the darts. Has the bicep grip. May roll onto his shoulder and try and hook a leg. Abandons it. Didn't quite feel comfortable with it. May see Askarov try and roll out of this position. Phil, I've seen Vagif move very explosively. Maybe setting up a victory roll at this point. Maybe maybe trying to explode to standing. Hook in by Abdi Salam. Second hook in. May flatten out his guy. And from here, it could be the rear naked choke, but transitions into the mount. Some well placed strikes. That's a huge elbow. Just cutting through the guard right now. Larkin is watching carefully. That's huge ground and pound. Gives up the back again. Huge Deke's strikes. Deki's talking to the fighter. Deki needs to see intelligent defense from Vagif Askarov. 
And the mouthpiece is out. Big That's the landing. end of it. No need. Dickie stops it. No need for Askarov to take any unnecessary punishment. He earns our respect by virtue of the fact he took the fight. But Abdi Salam Kubanizcek showing just what a dominant force he is, not just in the landscape of Kyrgyzstan MMA, but now in global mixed martial arts. Phil, we are going to see Abdi Salam, Hulu, Omak, Kubanizcek vie for the Brave Combat Federation title. I am absolutely sure of it. And I am absolutely sure that Vagi Askarov has all of my respect. He stepped off a plane in the early hours this morning. He fought tonight. That's a warrior. The heart wasn't enough, but he's got all my respect. He's being attended to by a world-class Padre, an MD, one of the best boxing coaches in the world. We've got Jess the Cup Man there. There you see great just, hands. There you see the beginning of the end. The mouthpiece comes out, he gets flattened out. He eats huge shots. Referee Deggy Logan sees it. There's no need for him to take any more unnecessary punishment. Calls a halt to the action. Your winner by first round TKO, extending his winning streak to eight is Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanischek. Phil Vagif is staying on his stool. I think that's on a precautionary, not a necessary basis. But it's wise when a fighter takes that kind of punishment that you give him a chance just to sit and collect himself. He's clearly not happy with his performance. But I think, all things considered, he absolutely did the best he could. Big props to Vagui for taking a fight on short notice. Big props to Deki Larkin for stopping it when he did. And of course, monster props to Abdi Salam, Ulu Omak, Kubanichbek, who will be fighting for the Brave Combat Federation title in short order. I am extremely confident. They may leave Vagif on his corner. No, he's standing up of his own accord, walking to center cage. Fighters are exiting. The Roaring Lion makes it official. All right, Brave Nation, what an explosive bout in the Brave CF 45 cage. This one comes to an end at three minutes and 33 seconds of the very first round. Referee Decky Larkin stops about a TKO due to strikes for your winner, Abdi Salam Ulu Omuk Kupa Nishpe. We had bite of 71 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and 14 losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70.8 kilos. Fighting out of Tajikistan, presenting Yahongil Saeed Yamalov. And his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 16 wins and three losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70.8 kilograms. Fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, presenting Abdi Salam Ulu Omok Kubanich <laughs> Opponent took it as a personal offense, walked up, exchanged some glances, and now it's on! I was almost surprised to see him touch gloves, but here we are. And Sai Jamalov draws first blood with a, a lead jab there. And as you mentioned, 
uh, Kubanichbek uh, has a, a background in wrestling, but he is just such an effective striker. He has a lot of KO power, especially in his left hook. It's one of the things for that's the hardest to develop for wrestlers is striking. There's a certain rhythm and, of course, all the pulling and wrestling, and it doesn't lend itself to the fluidity, to the rhythm of striking. So what you're seeing is somebody who had a wrestling base and overcame that and now punches, kicks, puts his shots together with tremendous fluidity and rhythm. We last saw... Uh, Kubanich back in uh, November of last year at Brave 45 where he defeated Vagif Askero by a first round TKO. A result I'm sure he would be pleased to replicate here. Oh, nice, nice shot. Omak wobbled just a little. Omak waiting to find his feet. They're not quite there. Saeed Jamalov has some power in his punches. That was a solid combination. Brave Nation, if you don't get hit in the head a lot, when you're hit in the head, you're, you've got five to 10 seconds, it, you gotta hang through, then you recover. Body shots are different. Get hit in the body, it's gonna last a while. Omak got hit in the head. He did make it through the five, maybe 10 seconds, he's back to normal. Yeah, he, he has definitely turned things around here. He is now the one pressing the action. He landed a nice kick a little bit earlier. And some good strikes here as well. Nothing super powerful, nothing that's gonna end the fight, but he is definitely getting back into the fight. He's gotta respect that power from the fighter from Tajikistan though. If another shot lands like that just a little cleaner, it's lights out. Absolutely. I mean, either, both of these fighters have fight ending power at pretty much any moment. Uppercut, a uh, hellacious uppercut missed there from uh, from Omak, which could definitely have altered the course of the fight had it landed. Saeed Jamalov smiles after landing a leg kick of his own. And he eats one as well from Omak. Maybe an, oh! Maybe an accidental eye poke. Omak's not sure what happened. Did not realize that the fight was stopped. The referee may have been out of view when he stopped it. I Sebastian, just, sometimes these happen, and it's yeah. a punch to the eye, and the fighter feels like a finger went in the eye, and it didn't. In the, in the heat of the fight, you can't quite tell. Absolutely. Right now, referee is telling Omak, keep your fingers together, and the fight goes on. And I would not expect Kubanich Beck to have done anything like that on purpose. I mean, sometimes in those exchanges, even if it were the finger at slips, you know, your hand just kind of opens up, you know, after you've landed a strike, maybe it just, yeah. It could be several different things that prompted it. Either way, they are back in action now. Leg kick misses there from both fighters, actually. I like how Kubanich Beck is always fainting with the hands, always fainting with the hips, always double leg denied. Not quite sufficient commitment on that double leg. Omak now is his opponent up against the fence. He's very skilled oh. at tying up and going into elbows, and they can be fight turning. We've seen it before. Nice takedown take from, from Kubanishbek. He was landing some solid shots as well, especially a left hand that, that definitely got Saeed Jamalov's attention. And now instead it is on the ground. Saeed Jamalov working hard to get back onto his feet, but Kubanishbek just not giving him the space required to do so. Oh, he's going for a rear naked choke. Very tough to get without position first. There is an old adage, position before submission. There are times you can break it. I'm not sure this is one of them. This is a time you can try and break your opponent's head, though. And that's what's going on. Absolutely. Kubinishbek just unloading with strikes on Saeed Jamlov, who is holding on to his opponent's left hand for dear life just to make sure that the choke is not completed. Oh, but he lets go in just a split second. Oh, that's escaped Woo, but it's frying pan into the fire you escape the choke and there's shots raining down on you yeah this is a terrible position for Saeed Jamalov I mean he just can't really get out of there I mean Kubanich Beck is just not giving him any space to work with at all as I alluded to earlier this fighter is absolutely relentless and he will attack you with strikes, with submissions, and with his wrestling. There is no rest whatsoever against this man. Said Yamalov doesn't seem to want any rest. He's trying to stand. He's trying to bring the fight back up to his feet. He is up on his feet. 
We're down a short time now, Brave Nation, about five seconds. Omak looking maybe for a takedown to cement this oh. round. And that's time. Mighty, mighty round. Absolutely, a great first round, and especially for Kuban Ichbek, who really came on strongly there, <laughs> ironically enough, after getting tagged himself. It's almost like it woke him up, got him into the fight. He realized that he needed to give a little bit more, and that he certainly did. Finished off around very, very strong back clinch position, landed a strong knee in that position as well, and <laughs> just dozens of strikes from the back mount. So everybody, everybody knows Russian fighters are arguably the toughest in the world. And I have to say, I don't know if you've noticed, but these fighters don't even use stools. Yeah. Everybody's like, I don't need to sit down in a stool. <laughs> Only weak people do that. Some of them stand, some of them rest on the ground. People so tough, they don't even need a stool. That's it. It's seconds out. Everybody's got 10 seconds to exit the Brave Combat Federation cage so the action can resume for you, our great fans. And let's see how Sai Jamalov gets back into the fight because as mentioned, he started off very strongly. I mean, he kind of clipped Kuban Ichbek in the early instances of the first round, but then, then Omak just got back into a fight and started taking over. So let's see what adjustments Sai Jamalov can make here. Nice little strike combination there. Mostly missed or blocked. A punch is most effective. It's most likely to knock the oh. opponent out. Not there when an opponent is moving away, but when you can catch an opponent moving in. Kuban Ishbek is finding the target with that right hand. Twice it got through. Very nice work. Going for the takedown out, which is being well defended by Sai Jamalov, who lands a nice counter and a left hand. But Omak fires back. That's what makes Omak such a special fighter. He was completely dominating the standing, landing left, right, left, right, could have continued with that. And instead, level change, got in on his opponent, took him down to the mat, and now is threatening something even worse than a left and a right to the head. Absolutely, he is back. Oh, That's he's it. got it! It is over! That is it. Omak gets the tag! Abdi Salam, Ulu Kubanichbek lines up another victory here in Brave Combat Federation and does it with style. That was a very. Brave Nation, your referee Nikolai Sharipov has called an end to the action at one minute and eight seconds of round number two, declaring your winner via submission due to rear naked choke fighting out of the red corner, Abdi Salam Ulu Omok
warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins, nine losses, and one no contest. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs a rating 70.7 .7 kilograms. Representing the incredible fighting and fitness center and fighting out of the Philippines. Please welcome the Brave CF 2020 Fighter of the Year, Rolando the Incredible D. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a first record of 17 wins and three losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 71.7 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Ilas and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, please welcome Abdisalam Ulu Omok Kupa. He will be in the red corner in the white shorts, taking on Rolando D. Incredible in the blue corner. I loved what Kuban Hbik did when he was being introduced. He marched into the center of the octagon, <laughs> laid down the gauntlet. Shades of Junior Dos Santos. Certainly was. I will also say, in the time it took Carlos Kramer. To do the introductions, I had 50 DMs from the Philippines telling me that I was pronouncing the name wrong. Rolando, not Ronaldo. I do apologize to the entire nation of the Philippines and personally to Rolando D as well. We are set and underway. Rolando D mixing up the strikes well here, working the head, working the body, throwing the kicks in. Can make it difficult for Ab Abdi Salam to get inside. Abdi Salam, he just looks tough, doesn't he? He's just got that face of a fighter. Tough in demeanor and tough in his fight style. He's going to continually press forward. He's going to start off with the strikes. Once he's got his measure of the man with those hands, he's probably going to level change and try and get in on the hips. But in all cases, he will be relentless. Rolando Day keeping that left hand high. I'm sorry, right hand high almost as if anticipating something big coming in, but he has that in his locker, just that capacity to counter strike so quickly. Beautiful lead hook. And we have talked a lot about Abdi Salam and the run he's on, the three fights, the three victories, the three finishes, but in his last fight, Brave 46, where he took on uh, Saeed Jamolov, in the second round, he won that by rear naked choke, but he faced adversity, he got wobbled in that first round. Nice little slip and rip there from Omok. Both guys showing that they've got very dangerous hands, Brian. Dangerous hands, but there's, you can feel the respect between them, Kirik, as well. It's huge. This is literally a don't blink moment. One of these fighters could blink, and something would happen within that split second of time and end it. Orlando working the body a little bit to try and come over the top, but both these guys have laser-like precision with their strikes. I'd even go as far as to say the precision is precise. <laughs> we can see the marks from that precise precision. <laughs> on the face there of Rolando. Omar uh, could try and stay in the outside, point fight a little bit, mm. try and use that reach, but he's not. He's stepping right into the fire, nice trying to land big job. shots. Well, the, the thing I like about his strikes is as he steps in, Rolando is right on the end of those. That range is already there for uh, Abdi Salam. Rolando thinking about that counter hook again. There it is. More pressure though coming from Abdi Salam. That is one of the weapons he uses. He's always in your face. And what he does so well is he can add just incremental pressure. So every 30 odd seconds that go past, he's adding another degree of pressure. Rolando with the back against the cage. That is like a red rag to a ball for Abdi Salam. Looking for the takedown now. Rolando splitting the base well, but. Omar like a dog with a bone when it comes to his takedowns. Indeed, Phil, indeed. Impressive stuff, taking away the base. High level grappling once again, Kirik. Just landing those little pot shot elbows. D trying his best to regard or regain his guard. He has the butterfly hooks. He may try and elevate and sweep, but with someone as well versed in wrestling and grappling as Kuban each back, it's very difficult. 
Needs to be wary of the up kick here. But yeah. again, just as he tries to, to get up again, smothered by Omar. There's that figure four, there's the, the, the calves, the ankles shelved. You can escape this, but in order to do so, you have to leave your face open. And when that happens, that happens. What you're seeing right there, there was an escape. It was successful, but there was two clean shots to the melon. And again, happy to set in that anchor position. And it's crazy the amount of power Kubanich Beck can generate from being on his knees, from being in that sort of jilted stance. Without a doubt, and power is also a blessing. You, some, if you either got it or you haven't, mm. and he uses it so well, trying to feed that arm back through now, trying to control that grip. Uh, smart Doug wrist Stunny handcuff coming up. It's likely to be followed with elbows. Oh, a nice shot coming in. He's, what he's doing so well there is he's mixing it it's to the head. They're coming underneath the armpit. He's using a strike to elicit space so that he can land further strikes. Very, very smart. And sticking to the back like glue of uh, Rolando D. Nice little takedown as well there. Once again, showing another way that he can get you to the mat. What he did so intelligently with that takedown is he used his foot as the little shelf with which to pull Rolando over. Very subtle, but worked brilliantly for him. Final 10 seconds of this opening round. And looking to finish big is Abdi Salam. Absolutely fantastic, technical, exciting round. Lived up to all of our expectations. Yeah, the opening minute or so, feeling each other out, a lot of respect. But once that distance was close, Phil, Abdi Salam showed a lot of power, a lot of aggression in those wrestling uh, exchanges. And you pointed out it wasn't just the wrestling exchanges, it was also that little jab he was throwing, stepping into it. And just by taking away that, that maybe six, seven, eight inches, he was leaving Rolando right at the end of the power point of that jab. It was very smart, but yes, the wrestling was fantastic and the wrist control, just so smart and so fluid with it. And with Rolando, when you're looking at the way he got taken down, it was when he stopped with his back against the cage. He's got to keep moving. That lateral movement is going to be so important for him to keep it on the feet in the second round. As you said, it's a red rag to a bull against someone like Kubanichbek if you're standing with your back to the fence. I would say the lateral movement, but he can't even have his back that close. He can't, he can't be skirting the edge of the cage. I would say the little, the first black line where you see inside, or sorry, the second black line you see inside the cage is the perimeter with which you should work. So we are set for round number two in here in our main event at Brave 47. What a night it's been. What a spectacular first round this main event has given us so far as we step into the second. Rolando D in the blue corner. Abdi Salam, Ulu Kubanichbek in the red. Rolando D is a brilliant fighter. He knows his path to victory here. Is a straight, probably followed up with a hook. He's going to do everything he can to try to set that up. He may have to take some punishment to do it. And he's, he's used to being it. Sorry, he's used to being in that role of the underdog. He's been against those guys who were who were going who were meant to steamroll him. John Bruin was meant to walk through him, yet he he bested him. So he thrives in that role of the underdog. And that just gives another bit of credit to his mental fortitude. The corner he's turned since taking his last loss. But he has got to switch the t the tides here tonight. Oh, another connection from both fighters there. Nice one too from Kuban each oh. Nice man and big strikes. Use those strikes to close the distance, Kirik. D's got his stance split wide, wide, wide. If he can be taken down here, it is a huge moment for Omak. Oh those, the stance is split so wide, Brave Nation, that the fighters' hands cannot come together. If Omak's fingers clasp, there's going to be a takedown. If they don't, it's going to be very hard to get it. Looks like those are locked already, Phil. And yeah. he's down. Rolando just trying to hold on right now to try and force referee Deggy Larkin to get them back up, but quasi-crucifix from the half-guard position, perhaps here. Yeah, forcing him to give up the backs, turn to the side. Oh, and elbows to the Ooh. ribs. That's Heavy. A, that's a bit naughty. <laughs> Great wrist control again here from Kubanich Beck. Just the pressure of this mm. man. You can feel his power, but the way he distributes that pressure under it onto the, the opponent beneath him is phenomenal this is very nearly a frame by frame replay of the first round omar clearly has a strategy he's doing exactly what he wants to d is up he's got to split that stance or he's going to be down again nice elbow by d incredible nice we're watching the hands now if those hands come together there's going to be a takedown you look at the way he works his way into that now switches to the single fill and then almost transitioned into taking the back, but 
Rolando did quite well there was he lifted the frame of Kubanich back up so he couldn't get the hands passed around the backside for the takedown. But right now Rolando really needs to turn it up with the hands. He's getting caught with some shots here. He has a chin on him for sure. He's eating some big shots coming from Ab Abdi Salam. Oh, that was a huge oh. shot straight on again. Looking for his fourth finish inside the brave cage is Abdi Salam Kubanich back. He's just measuring it up for that big straight. The incredible waiting for that head to clear. Brave Nation, when you take a shot to the body, it's cumulative. A shot to the head l hurts for five to ten seconds, and then it clears. That's what he's Ooh, waiting for. Oh, an elbow over the top, just hitting there on the rear of the ear. But then what he does so brilliantly is he lands the strikes in it straight away. Boom, in for the takedown. Land another big couple of elbows there. And he's still got a lot of time on which to work, just under two minutes here in the second round. Yeah, one minute, 45 seconds in this second round of our main event here. At Fort Arad, what a spectacular setting this has been. And the fights, the results, the spectacular KOs we've had have lived up to the, the billing so far tonight. And this main event has been all Abdi Salam, Kuban Ichbek so far. Doing a great job of just pushing down the leg of Rolando D. Could even skirt across. But he's more than happy to stay in this position and just land huge strikes, body to the head. And Rolando D must be thinking, what do I need to do to get this man off me? It's just the elements of control he has as well. You see how he controlled the wrist before that. Now that forward pressure again, those elbows grinding into the chin of Rolando D. And again, pins down the arm. Should Rolando D be looking to skirt back towards the fence, Kiri? Because that is key to getting back to his feet. He should, but in order to do it, he's going to have to leave his face open a little bit. And at this point, his brain is not in a position to take three or four more clean shots. So he's hand fighting. He's staying in tight. He's got a knee shield to deny his opponent, hip leverage in those strikes, and he's trying to pull the head down again to deny leverage. And he's hand fighting. He's holding on to those hands. You can see some of the damage there just on the right eyebrow. Oh, another clean shot comes with the overhand right there, Phil. Nice work by Rolando to try and regain the guard. But again, it goes back to what we're saying about frequency and continuity by Omog. This is almost like this is his game plan. This is what he does so well. Many people have tried to prevent him from doing it, but that shows just what a specialist he is. Final 10 seconds of this second round. We. Kubanichbek is a specialist in everything. He can do everything. He can submit. He can strike on the ground. He can strike from standing. He can take his opponent down. He can stop a takedown. He can push his opponent up against the fence. This is mixed martial arts at the highest level that we have the privilege to watch. And you saw the two different demeanors after that round. Kubanichbek, a big smile to his corner, calling them in. Whereas Rolando D stayed sat where he was and what would you look for the corner to do now, Phil? They've really got to show him he's got to step out there and make something happen, dig well, deep. Well, that's it exactly, Brian. They, they know that he has that capacity, but he needs to go out there. And again, it's, it's not dissimilar to fights we've seen earlier. Conceivably, he's down two rounds. He needs to go in there and he needs to channel something from deep within him and he needs to go out there and get the finish. This is where that motivation you talked about comes into play. The fight's Ste over. Oh, it's over. The fight's over. Oh, there we go. Call uh, on the stool, guys. Unable to answer the bell for the third and final round. Understandably so. Let's give credit to the pressure, the, the absolute dominance of Abdi Salam, Ulu, Kuba, Nijbek. Maybe not the way he would have wanted to finish the fight, but there is something to be said about making your warrior, your opponent, not be able to come out and, and greet you once again for that final five minutes. I know the incredible wanted to come out for this round that was a stoppage by his corner it's very unusual in mixed martial arts in mma basically the fighters hire the coach the coach is working for them it takes a coach with a lot of courage to do what you saw here he looked at his fighter he knows him intimately and he said i am not going to let you go out for this final round i gotta say i absolutely respect that you look at the other two rounds the pressure was only building up the damage was only building up phil and now the hype is building up for that man Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanichbek because he is on a 10-fight win streak 
Four fights in Brave, four finishes. Hey, like I said at the start of the fight, he has now made himself undeniable as the number one contender. He's got another round left in him, no problem. <laughs> he's another couple of rounds. He's charging back and forth right now. He's telling, he's not asking for a title shot. He's telling Muhammad Shahid that he is next in line for the belt. And I saw a good nod there. Who wouldn't deny that, man? He can take, take my car, my children, my dog, my house. <laughs> a performance like that is just absolutely stunning. I'm really impressed with my first viewing of this man. And like you said, undeniable. Rolando Dido, what a spectacular human being he is. We will see him back. He knows how to bounce back, and he will do it again, I am absolutely sure. He absolutely will. We've had the honor and the pleasure of spending quality time with both these gentlemen, and they are gentlemen. These are great human beings, as well as being back between these two warriors. Oh, a little dig at the end. You said he had a round in him left, Phil. He's still trying to work the body, but but guys, this is only one of four Brave Combat Federation shows in the arena. What a standard has been set. The bar is incredibly high. Follow that. Let's hand it to the man in the middle, Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible way to end this historic night. This comes to an end at the end of the second round, a corner stoppage, fighter unable to continue, and your winner, and now the Brave Combat Federation number one lightweight contender in the world from Kyrgyzstan, Abdi Salam Ulu Omuk Kuba. This next battle is five five minute rounds for the interim lightweight championship of the world. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and three losses. He stands 190 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.3 kilograms. Representing Full House and fighting at a Belo Horizonte Brazil. Introducing the former Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Clayton Plagador Silva. And introducing his opponent, Fighter the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 18 wins and three losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.3 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Elos and fighting at a Fiskat Kyrgyzstan. Give it up for Abdi Salam Ulo Omov. For further instructions. Big thanks to Gulf Air, our aviation sponsor. I am a frequent flyer on Gulf Air, and I'm so delighted to say once again, Gulf Air, our aviation sponsor. Now, Phil, in mixed martial arts, you can break it down very, very simply into two parts. How much impact can you inflict and how much can you endure? As you get older, the power is the last thing to go. You can inflict a lot of damage, but can you take it as you get older? That is the question that Predador Silva faces right now. Predador Silva entering his 11th year as a professional mixed martial artist. It's a big shot over the top, he got wobbled. Kobanich Beck doing a good job not to smother and crowd his work. Bet needs to get those hands a little bit higher. Predator is a, as dangerous on the attack as he has ever been. But time cannot be stopped. The ability to absorb punishment declines with time. Another big shot over the top from Uldu. He's landing that big right hand at nauseam. I'm extremely impressed, Phil, that the height difference between Omak and Predador 
which, which is pretty significant, is proving to be no problem for the fighter from Kyrgyzstan. Well, ironically, Kuban Ichbek just needs to look at the fight fought by Amin Ayub when he beat Clayton Silva for the, be for the belt for a little bit of a blueprint on how to get it done in there. Phil, it was a couple seconds ago, there was a very nasty check by Omak of a right low kick. I believe it banged up Predador's foot just a little bit. May have compromised his ability to move. You may not see him throwing a lot of more right low kicks. Oh, oh big shot sh behind the ear. Huge shot from Silva. Senses a little bit of a, an impediment or an impediment. I was talking about the ability to absorb punishment. You're seeing it on view here. Omak can take a shot. Trying to get in on the clinch and get the takedown. Clayton Predador Silva is a bona fide Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt, but if there is such a thing, I would say Abdi Salam Ulukubinic is a black belt in mixed martial arts. High cross, and that's the strength of Omok. Air Kyrgyzstan landing hard. Just solidifying the position. And this is where Ulu does some incredible work, just systematically breaking down his opponent. Kuvanich Beck has a couple options here. He can try and pass that guard, or as you saw here, if it doesn't go his way, he can follow it up, take that back, and from there, anything can happen. We got one hook in, we got two hooks in. Fighter is not too high. He may try and- Hip just, pressure's coming. Just stretch out. Huge pressure coming. Hipping right in, he's underneath the chin. Forearms in place, huge. short time now. Short time, Phil. Oh, this is short so time. Deep. Silva doing the right thing, fighting the hands. Oh. Beautiful defense by Predador Silva. Educated Brazilian, or educated Bahraini crowd, loving the work of the Brazilian here. Broom sweep, takedown, tables are turned. We had one hook in, ah, positions are reversed. Incredible fight so far. Drag take down from Kuban Ichbek. Om Omak back on the back. Just now forcing. Beautiful little takedown. Scramble, scramble. Who's going to win it? Nice straight right. Ducks underneath. Just uses the shots of Silva to invite him in and then take him down. Again, taking the back here. Surprised he didn't try and get some hooks in there. He was landing shots cleanly, and he had, oh. I was about to say, he had so much luck with that little kick sweep takedown. He knew he could do it again, and he did. He's gonna shift his hips back just a little, a little and then start putting, here. a little too high. He's gonna shift the hips back, and then starting put, put, put pressure on those hips. Drive his opponent's knees back towards the camera, flatten him out, and from there, if it's successful, we're gonna see a second attempt at that choke. Oh, that first attempt, that first attempt was thwarted. I guarantee you Omak learned something in losing that first submission attempt. Oh. Whatever he lost is gonna be on full display very shortly if he has his way. Landing big shots again. He's quite high up the back here. I'd like to see him get a little bit further down. Right in front of us, landing huge shots. Clayton the Derrickson. impact is in that ah, it. it's all over. It's all over. Ladies and gentlemen, Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanichbek. Oh, wait no. a minute. Oh, I, I but thought. Wait, I, but oh. wait, but wait, but wait, fight fans. There is more. I believe there is going to be a strict caution against striking to the back of the head. We're going to get a little look at what happened right now on the replay. Thanks to Green Hill. Oh, with one clip, the back of the head, two. Three, maybe four. Initially, I thought referee Arm Wallace was stopping the fight in my over exuberance. I got a little too excited. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Clayton Predator Silva. I think he's claiming he's not able to see properly at the minute. His vision's impeded. Oh, this would be a terrible way to. There end is the fight an aspect like of mixed martial arts, combat sports fans where it is not to your advantage to downplay when you get hit with an illegal blow. There is not much in it to your advantage. Omak gesturing to the crowd, saying he does not believe that he hit the back of the head. We just hope that... Omak indicating with his hands he wants to get that belt wrapped around his waist. 
We just hope that Clayton Pedro Silva is able to continue because this was a transpiring to be an incredible fight. Predator Silva has up to five minutes. During that five minute span, he's gonna be, he's gonna be. That was clean. That one clipped the back of the head. Um, potentially clipped. There's a degree of ambiguity here. I will say this with, without exception, there was no intent to hit the back of the head there. I think like many people in the crowd here, we both thought that the fight had been called to an end. Medical staff are now attending to Predador. They have a couple more minutes. That's a very long time in the sport. He's being spoken to, he's being asked about his vision, about his clarity of thought, maybe even asked simple questions like, what day is it, what city are you in? There can be uh, language issues in our sport. This event has 24 fighters from 15 different nations. Between them, there's probably 30 or more languages spoken. We've got an excellent translation staff standing by here to assist as necessary. Oh, Clayton, Predator Clayton Silva shaking his head. That's not a good sign at all, Carrick. As I say, that, that had all the make, that first round had all the makings of a fantastic fight. And it's just such a shame we find ourselves in this situation. Koban Ijbeg is very much ready and willing to go, but. The fight has been called off. Clayton Predator Silva indicated to the medical staff that he was not able to continue due to vision issues. I believe again as as in a, in a five round yep. fight as enough not nearly enough time has passed for the judges to render a decision this bout is going to be declared a no contest the interim title belt is going to going to remain vacant oh this is so unfortunate not the results any fighter wanted This fight will, will be rendered a, a no contest. And again, it's only fair to, to run this one back. Both fighters are going to feel like they had an opportunity to become the interim champion. As I'd said earlier, Phil, one of the things that goes in a fighter, and one of the two most, uh, the most important thing is mixed martial arts is being able to deliver punishment, but nearly equally as important is the ability to, to sustain it, the ability to receive it. That yeah. really does go away with time. We may be past Clayton Silva's time to be in a combat sports cage. No fairy tale ending for Clayton Predator Silva. No championship reign genesis for Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanichbek. The result will be a no contest, Carrick. We just have to, to make it official. But again, it's 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 disappointing for, for, for both fighters. It's disappointing for the fighters. It's 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 as disappointing as hell for Abdi Salam, Ulu, Kubanichbek, for Omak, for his for his country, for his corner, for his teammates, for his friends, for all of his fans all across the world. This is not the ending that anyone wants to see in a fight. But you have to think at only 27 years old, there's still a lot of time for Omog. He's only really now starting to approach those prime years, especially in the lightweight division. As I said, Phil, I thought this was gonna be a test of Clayton Silva's ability to withstand impact. In the end, after some blows that got at least dangerously close to the back of the head area, he indicated after five minutes, he did not want to continue. Yeah. That, that may indicate that his time in the cage has elapsed. Uh, and let's, another factor that comes into play here, 
Kuba needs to back. Hits like an absolute Mack truck. So if he's in that position and he's landing strikes and they're unintentionally going errant, he hits with a lot of power. They're going to have that effect and on his opponent. And of course, when you have back mount, opponents facing down, not only do you not see the punches coming, and the worst punches in all striking-oriented combat sports are the ones you don't see, but your head is up against the up yeah. against the floor. Yeah, you've got you can't on move with too, it. You can't yeah. roll with the punches. And gravity, bad word. you got gravity on your side, too, when you're on top. Brave Nation, we're just waiting for the officials ringside to deliver. I believe we're just seconds away now from the officials ringside to hand the official statement to Carlos Kramer. And Carlos Kramer will make it official by reading it out to the crowd here in Combat Kingdom, the amazing Kingdom of Bahrain, and of course, worldwide through streaming and broadcast. Brave Combat Federation has lit a roaring fire, fanned the flames, threw some gasoline on it, and they just put two sticks of dynamite into it. Brave Nation, it's about to blow up. Let's make some noise. Fighter instructions were going to be interesting there. Two lads from Kyrgyzstan listening to a lad from Balaki give instructions. I'm sure that made a lot of sense to them. What an incredible fight and prospect here. Dickie Larkin is your man in the middle, one of the best in the business. This for the title. Both these men incredibly tough. Kubanichbek's ring intelligence, which is a thing, is very, very high. IQ, it yeah. takes most fighters a minute to two minutes to see where their opponent's at. He's closer to 15 seconds. But Iskariev cannot be discounted. He is as tough as they come. I've been in the workout room with him. He is incredibly strong. Again, very smart. But again, Kubanichbek just has that X factor, that intangible, that thing that makes him so dangerous and, and such a formidable opponent inside the Brave Arena. Looks like he's trying to load up the right hand to parlay that into the shot. Circling now to keep his foot in the outside of his opponent's foot. When he gets that and he gets the distance he wants, he's going to let that hand go. Iskaryev needs to be wary of walking into that right hand. If he's forced to circle out to his left hand side, which is the power side of Kubanichbek, he could get caught with that big right hand. Iskaryev tried to land that jab over the shoulder. Very, very tough. When you're a southpaw and your opponent's in an orthodox stance, can be done, but tough, tough, tough to do. Yeah, you kind of need to pat down that lead hand in order to land your jab. Yeah. 
Very smart to go to the body. Get your opponent's attention down a little bit. It's that much easier to land that shot to the head. And at fighters at this level, that shot to the head can end it on the spot. Especially with these little four ounce gloves. You know, the guard that you would have in the likes of boxing or in the likes of Muay Thai is different because the glove will absorb a lot of the punishment. It's just not the case. We've seen it with kickboxers who try and transition to MMA. They leave these little pockets, these little gaps. Beautiful shot to the body there from Kuban Ichbek. What you saw right there, Phil, that's a champion's mark. When somebody does something to you, you do it back to them better. He's now getting Eskariev to bite on his feints a little bit. Didn't land flush, but that right hand is dangerous. Both these men trying to soften up the body. Lead uppercut to straight combination from Kubanich Beck. Seems the game plan is to soften up the body here. For for both men. Both men are are they're mirroring taking one another. the full they're taking the full measure of each other. They're mirroring. To me, yeah. I'm gonna do it to you. Nice lead looping hook. Each of these fighters has supreme confidence in their skill. Oh, huge shot over the top into the takedown from Kubanich Beck, and this is where he really flourishes. This is where he does his best work. This is where he is at his most formidable and dangerous. Was in in a high crotch. It was denied the first time. It looks like it was the second time as well. Nice work from Iskariev to defend the takedown. I did see him in the workout room working a lot of get-ups, working a lot of takedown defense with his training partners. Very wise man, and that was a very wise elbow to the forehead from Omak. Great head positioning now. It's these subtle little things that Kuba Nietzschebeck does that belay that he is such a good fighter. There it is. But Iskariev again getting right back up to his feet or at least attempting to do so. Doing the right things. Pressuring the head. Hoping where the head goes, the body follows. And Kuba Nietzschebeck may be cut over the eye here. Kuba Nietzschebeck is cut over the eye. I did not see an elbow land it may have been one of those shots a little bit earlier potential in the fight it's also possible there was a cut during training and it opened up another strong possibility is an accidental clash of heads mm. this is all conjecture though we i didn't see it land doesn't seem to be a massive impediment over the eye right now it seems to be more to the side excellent giraffe fighting from omak the use of that head is so important. The head becomes a third hand if it's used properly. Denies the opponent the full use of his core. Escorea very wisely, I think, separates. Oh, that cut is just above the eye, actually. If Escoriev can zero in on that. I'd love to see if we can possibly replay of where that cut happened, where it opened up. The doctors will surely be in in, the sec or in between rounds to get a look at that. Nice head kick coming from the southpaw. Oh, yes. Needs to be wary of leaning in when he throws that looping hook. Again, the takedown from Kuba and each back. Phil Omak is fighting with a little bit more vigor. He, he may be worried about that cut. Ten seconds. One hook's in. Yeah. Closing stance of the round, but nice work by Skaryev. Finishes the, the, the round on top in the eyes of the judges. All right, call it, Phil. Who'd you like in that round? 10-9, 9-10. An incredibly close round, but if I had to split them by a hair, I would say just for the, the, the positional control, I would have to go Kuban each bank. Your thoughts, Kerry? I'm going to split it. I'm going to go the other way for the oh, simplest thing in combat sports, and that's damage. damage. If you're not sure who won, ask yourself a simple question. Who hurt who more? By that standard, I have Olyas Eskareyev up 10-9. Phil's got it 9-10 for Abdi Salam Kubanich back. Doesn't matter anyways, because we're not official judges. Just having a little bit of fun trying to get you, Brave Nation, to think about who won this round. As you can see by our opponents, it could have gone either way. But all in all, very good showing by both fighters. The big worry, of course, is that cut. Oh, there's, the there's the, there it was. There it was, Carrick. There was accidental the accidental clash of accidental the heads. Accidental clash of heads just skimmed one another as Kubanitsbeg was the one who was initiating the takedown. Thanks to our great production team here for finding that, putting that in front of us. Brave Nation, cuts can cause a lot of blood and not be dangerous. 
they can cause a little bit, but being a spot right above a nerve and the doctors have to stop it. We don't have the expertise at this point to know one way or the other, whether that cut is very dangerous or whether it's relatively speaking a triviality. Decky Larkin runs a tight, tight ship. Round two just about to start. With glove touch, sign of mutual respect. If you're Escariev, do you try and zero in on that eye? Try and open that up a little bit more, make it bleed into the You sure the do, eye. and before you do that, you try and get him to think about something else. Get him to think you're trying to kick him in the legs, level change, Think you make him think you want to get in his hips, and then bang him right in that cut. Nice movement from Escariev. Oh, huge oh, uppercut. Dazzling shot. Oh, he's hurt. Dazzling shot, Phil. Kuban Eastbeck trying to get it done early in the second round here. Landed two big shots. Kuban Eastbeck trying to take the back. He's very high up right now. He's well out of position to throw big shots. He does have a figure four now. Eskariev doing everything he can to try and turn in. But then, again, that illustrates just how dangerous Kuban Eastbeck. Something out of nothing. Brave Nation, this figure four position, those, those locked legs around the torso is the most miserable form of control there is. It's, it, the, the ribs can hurt. It's very difficult to inhale. And of course, the opponent can put you, can threaten you with a submission or further strikes. But Eskariev doing a great job of turning those hips in towards Kuban Ichbek. Oh yes, Eskariev is a beast. Triangle attempt. Skaryev really is something different, isn't he? Got rocked, got put on his backside, now he finds himself. Triangle's getting oh. close. Gotta got to get that foot underneath the knee and then twist the body a little bit so the two bodies are not lined up. But it's getting close. That foot is now getting. Now you got to get the knee to the ankle rather yeah. than towards the toes. He's in. This We've now got the, the, the angle between the bodies is formed. It's pressure on his foot as opposed to the shin being locked. Got to get the ankle rather than the toe part underneath that knee, and that doesn't sound like much. Believe me, it it's much. Difference. Switches to the armbar. Oh, and Iskariev is out. Fantastic, fantastic ability to wait it out to defend by Iskariev. And we're right back up on the feet now. Oh, beautiful short elbow by Kuban Ichbek. Phil Iskariev was in a submission hold in his mind right now. He wants to put his opponent in one. Tight against the cage and oh yes, Iskariev proving that he deserves his spot here to contend for the interim lightweight championship. Kuban H. Beck consistently proving what we all know, and that's that he is a very dangerous man. Take down from Kuban H. Beck. Excellent top game, making every inch his opponent move. Sap a little bit more energy, throwing some shots to the head, threatening a hook. Got one in place. Opponent is now forced to keep that hip pressed up against the fence, trying to keep the other hook from going in. We get a leg grapevine briefly. Going to switch to the body triangle, it seems, has that leg flush across the hip line. 100 seconds to go. Switch, there it is, the body triangle is in. Kubanich back now, very wisely looking for the underhook from the back. Trying to prevent his opponent from turning in, as we saw the last time it is. Woo! Iskariya manages to turn in for the second time. Brave Nation, that is extraordinarily hard to do from that back figure four. And now he's in the position to land ground and pound to try and open up that cut above the eye of Kuban Ichbek. But Kuban Ichbek throwing shots and elbows from the bottom, feet on the hips, trying to create distance. Oh, Skariev in his haste to try and get in on Kuban Ichbek, has left a little pocket of space here. Kuban Ichbek slowly, methodically, looking like he's working his way to take the back here snaking that arm underneath the chin, but Skariev is so game. Every time I think Skariev is in supreme danger, somehow seconds later he's not. 
And we, we keep talking about how tough he is. He's also doing everything right technically. He's turning into Kubanich back. He's negating the legs. He's defending the chokes. Not just tough, but also an incredibly intelligent fighter. Absolutely, Phil. Not just tough, because were it solely toughness, it wouldn't work. Kubanich back hits too hard. Anybody, who, their biggest part of their game is that they're a game fighter, that they're really tough. They're not going to beat this man. Again, and that back, back tick. In, and second round ends. You want to make a call for who you thought won that round, Phil? For me, that's Kubanich back taking that round again. But like you say, you have Eskariev taking the first round. So by your scorecard, you're talking a round apiece. And again, I was giving it, giving it on the very, very slimmest of margins. So all to play for going into the third and final round, Kerry. I'm very, very comfortable seeing, saying Omak won that round. I do think he made a tactical mistake. I think when he landed those two big shots, if he had continued to throw strikes, I think it probably would have ended right there. He opted instead to switch to a wrestling game. Opponent was able to keep going. There it is, look at that. And there was a follow-up, boom! Drops his opponent again. Third shot. Absolutely phenomenal. Perfect shot on the temple. Little left, little right. And then what I believe was a mistaken decision. Should have stood right up, called his opponent up. I think he could have gotten the knockout right there. As we say, all to play for going into the third and final round of this interim lightweight world championship at Brave Combat Federation 59, which has proved to be an incredible fight card showcasing some of the toughest fighters this region, this world, this planet has to offer. Touch of gloves, respect shown by both men. Who wants it more? Interesting, going back to the body again. May feel his opponent is tiring a little bit, or he may be trying to set up a shot to the head. My mistake, ladies and gentlemen, I misspoke saying this was the third and final round. Obviously, it being a championship fight, we have five five-minute rounds. I just get so carried away, Kerry, because I enjoy the fights. These are phenomenal fights. It's interesting, Phil Kubinich back in this, the third round now, seems to be getting a little bit stronger. He may be emotionally buoyed by having, we believe, won that second round, but his conditioning may be so extraordinary that he's basically just going into a second win right now. Well, as we've seen, Kubinich back can maintain a pace unheralded in mixed martial arts and put that pace on his opponents. Big flare double. Eskariev, in terms of conditioning, maybe fading just a little bit. Kubanich back, anything but. It may be a strange thing to say, but the fighting style of Kubanich back may lend itself better to these championship rounds. Yeah, he's a grinder. He's going to tire you out. He's going to hit you. Take a submission if it's there. Standing up with Kubanich back on your back is, is a very, very tough prospect. He's probably going to take your back, probably going to slam you down again. Eskariya very wisely has his back up against that fence, wants to keep it. Going for a key lock, probably not what he wants to do right here. Again, Brave Nation, those shots to the head you're seeing, they appear to be little. And they're not fight enders, but they're 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 miserable. This is causing damage. Oh, big shot right down the pipe from Kubanich back. Oh, now elbows turning up the frequency. Elbow coming. Big big shots by Kubanich back. And again, it's really been a, a story of survival so far in the opening stanzas of this third round for Askariev. It's being ragdolled right now by Kubanich Beck. Kubanich Beck playing a, a top game that's smothering, keeping his opponent crunched forwards. The abdomen can't fully expand. Fighter can't breathe, making the fighter carry your weights. The legs get heavy, throwing constant shots, both to remind the judges who's winning this and to cause pain. And then you stand up, 
your heart starts to beat. You think you're out. Boom, put right back on the ground again. It's heartbreaking. Momentarily, Askariev managed to get to his feet, but now he's back down, eating shots from Kubanichbek, trying to get that hook in, establish that. One hook, two hooks. Askariev needs to do everything he can to try and turn in towards Kubanichbek. Be interesting to see if Kubanichbek goes back to that figure four, that triangle on the body, which actually failed there it him is. twice. There he is, but this time he's got that leg lace. Yeah, he hooks the insole of his foot, the back of the thigh of Escaria. Very intelligent work. He's now got significantly better control than he did before. Oh, we've got danger, Phil. He is underneath the chin, but Escaria is able to defend. Momentarily there, he looked like he was in trouble. Iskariev needs to roll to the side that the triangle is locked on to alleviate some of that pressure. So he needs to roll to the opposite side. But again, still throwing punches from that position is Iskariev. A minute left with which to work for Kubanichbek. Short time now, Brave Nation. Fight is likely to play out with what we've seen here. Eskareyev, very gamely, trying to throw some shots. Very hard to get leverage when your opponent has you in back mouth. That back body triangle is the very definition of misery in this sport. But he is doing a good job of not remaining static, not just accepting the position and letting the inevitable happen because sometimes a position like this will break a fighter's will where he'll put himself in the choke just to get out of the fight. Brave Nation, you'll know that happens if you see the chin lift ever so slightly. One or two centimeters, chin comes up, means the fighter doesn't want to be here. That is emphatically not the case here. Eskareyev turns around, round ends. He sure wishes he'd had a couple of seconds to yeah. get something back. Phil, any question in your mind who won that round? None whatsoever. A definitive 10-9 round for Kubanichbek, but a little bit of a moral victory there for Eskareyev just to finish the round on top momentarily and prove to himself if he finds himself in this position, he can transition into the top. Very little question now, Brave Nation, that Kubanichbek is ahead, regardless of how you, what you thought happened in that first round. I believe he is ahead in this contest. He's getting stronger. I think in his corner, they're just going to tell him, keep doing what you're doing because you are working. Phil, any advice? You'd give Eskareyev if you were in his corner? Just lateral movement, work behind your jab. Have an uppercut loaded because I think you will see an inevitable takedown from Kubanichbek, but he's just such a difficult fighter to prepare for, to game plan for. He is that X factor, that unknown quantity. Just a different type of a fighter is Kubanichbek. Kubanichbek too, as we've seen in that first round. He got, he's not Superman, he's a human being. This is a fight between two men. He gets in dangerous positions, but emotionally, doesn't break at all. Does not seem flustered by the fact that things weren't always going his way. And now, now they are. And this is the first time in the professional career of Oyas Iskariev that he has gone to the championship round. So this is uncharted territory for him. And Brave Nation is very difficult to communicate how tough these championship rounds are. But both oh both men look pretty fresh. Both men still look in shape and ready to go. Neither welting, neither relenting, neither giving space. You always just feel that Cuban each back is waiting for something. Olyas is slowed just slightly. Understandably so. Kuban each back just pressing forward, showing the right hand. Kuban each back distance managing that very effectively. Oh, beautiful uppercut again. Landed more so on the gloves, but the threat of it is there. Next shot is next shot that lands with the hands is likely to be followed up. Oh, another shot. A little clash of heads again there, but. Oh, big Wobbled. shot over the top. At this point, Omak does not want to start wrestling. No, he's he does not want to start wrestling. He wants to keep striking. He's doing the right thing. Maintaining distance. Big elbow again. 
Eskarayev calls his opponent in, but he's unsteady on his feet. Oh, beautiful uppercut again. And this is the more calculated approach that we called for at the beginning of the broadcast, picking the shots, not just ferocity for the sake of it, but controlled, calculated aggression. Omuk has a long time left in this round. He is planning to finish this fight in this round, Brave Nation. Oh, elbows to the side of the dome from Kubanichbek. Kubanichbek has a very clear runway to land now. Has that wrist control, which is opening up the space for him, exposing the head of Iskariev. And he doesn't need to land knockout punches here. He just needs to land the frequency high shots. Skaryev, much to his credit, is trying everything he can to keep himself in this fight. Kubanichbek trying to pull his opponent away slightly so that he can sink down into mount, as you've seen there. The horrible thing about fighting Omak is you're getting punched in the face no matter what happens. Positions part way there, punched in the face. Positions all the way there, punched in the face. Omak. Got a little high, beautiful reversal. Full half of a round. Slightly paradoxical to say a full half of a round, but you know what I mean, Brave Nation. Half of a round left, trapping the arm. This would be absolutely huge if Iskariev were to pull off the victory here. Thinking about switching to that stretch. Both of these guys are toughness incarnate, but Koban Ichbek sneaks out. Feel like I could barely breathe there. That was an absolutely unbelievable moment. Again, the, the tension is absolutely palpable here. The Uzbek fans are on the edge of their seat. Brave Nation, this, we are in Uzbekistan. This is a wrestling culture. It is a combat sports culture. These fight fans know exactly what they're seeing and they are deeply appreciative. Nice shot to the midsection from Kubanichbek. Just sidestep his way to back. Looking maybe for a one-on-one, -on -one. use that leverage to bring the opponent back. May lace up the legs here, may even just try and run it out to get into the fifth round. I think he may be feeling Iskariev start to tire, which was slightly, which... Legs are shelved now. Skaryev trying to work that leg out without sacrificing the arms he's using to protect his head. As the hands connected and he's just forcing Skaryev to carry his weight. Referee Dick Larkin calling for a little bit more action. And he gets and it. He's getting a little bit more action. Short time now, Brave Nation. Down to the last few seconds. No question in anyone's mind, Phil. Kubanich Beck is now pulled. He's now up by at least three rounds. His opponent's corner knows it. Eskarev's corner has got to fire their man up. He did have a moment in the fourth round where he could have won it. They've got to remind their fighter to dig down all the way, try and find that moment again, and then go crazy. Simply trying to win the round is not going to do it. Deep into the final championship round. And as you alluded to, Kerry, the corner of Iskariev have to be telling him you need to go out there, give it everything you've got with your shield or on your sword kind of approach because he needs to finish if he wants to be crowned the interim lightweight champion of the world. On the transverse of that, you just tell Kuban each peg if you're in his corner to adopt the same approach, keep things smart, maintain your positional dominance, your positional control, land your shots and should an opportunity present itself, take it. One thing Kubanich Beck does not want to do is change a thing. He is now dominating this fight. 
shaking the arms out, the fatigue in the arms, particularly it's hot out still. The television lights are absolutely brutal. Shaking that fatigue out of his forearms. One of these fighters is five minutes or less from interim glory. For the final time tonight, these fighters embrace in the middle of the cage. Five minutes to dictate who we will crown. The interim lightweight champion of the world setting himself up for an inevitable collision course with our champion Ahmed Amir. Takedown attempt, takedown scored by Askariev. Askariev now needs to get past those legs. He needs to pass that guard. Ground and pound, not likely to win him this fight. Well, he needs to go to work from here. Kubanichbek, happy to be here, trying to set up the beginnings of a triangle choke right now. Smart with the bicep control as opposed to wrist control. Wrist control often indicates what you're gonna do. That bicep control could be misinterpreted as being purely defensive. As you said, Phil, very smart technical move there. Iskariev really needs to square off the hips. Needs to be where he's getting his back taken again here. There it is, the back take from being inside the guard to the back take. That is the MMA intellect of Abdi Salam Kubanichbek. Body triangles in place, leg is laced. Gonna be very, very hard for Olyas Eskareyev to get out of here. He has successfully any number of times now. He definitely has it in him. But quite simply, Kirik, survival is not enough for him to take the win and indeed the championship. Kumanich Beck now appears intent on securing a submission. He's throwing some little shots to the face, not to win favor with the judges, but to try and get his opponent to make a little mistake. Right now, Askarayev is not. He's driving back. Brave Nation, if there's a little bit of space between your hips and your opponent's back, it's fairly easy, relatively easy to get that choke in. When the opponent is right tight up against you, head almost even with yours, it's very, you, don't, you lack the leverage to get your full strength behind that choke, behind that squeeze. He's doing everything he can to sneak it in. But Iskariev, like, it's incredible that Iskariev, potentially, if it continues this way and he loses the fight, he has enhanced his reputation on the international stage. Undoubtedly so. Absolutely no question in my mind. Win, lose, or draw. I want to see Olyas Eskariev again and soon. More so defensive. For again, Brave Nation, when that head, when the fighter who has his back taken has his head up nice and high, very close to his opponent's head, very hard to get the choke in. Half Nelson momentarily by Kubanichbek. Kubanichbek has a mighty squeeze. He can go from. Oh, Iskariev once again turns in to Kubanichbek. This is incredible Absolutely stuff. Absolutely fantastic show of fortitude and technique. But right now he has one minute, 35 seconds with which to work, with which to finish Kubanichbek with which to become the interim lightweight champion of the world. Can he do it? He cannot do it inside his opponent's closed guard. Needs to roll those wrists inside to free them up. There's one. But Kubanichbek surely knows that all he needs to do is hold on in this situation. He may know it, but riding out a W is not his style. Mm. He's going to dance with a gal at Brungham. And that was being a very aggressive fighter, aggressive wrestler, aggressive kicker, aggressive striker, aggressive with the submissions. Both these fighters showing that they are absolute cardio machines. Kubanichbek opened those feet. He could have stayed Kimura. inside it. Now he's looking for a submission. Kimura at the attempt. beginnings of a key lock. He released it, but he's going to be looking for something else. Oh, transition into side control from Iskariev. Very impressive. Really needs to go to work with elbows or something here. Oh, 
Again, Kubanitsbek is just so smart knowing exactly what he needs to do to shut down the offense of Iskariev to prevent him from landing those big strikes. Such intelligent work from Abdi Salam Kubanitsbek. Very, very short time, Brave Nation. There, there we have it. That final beautiful gong. Fantastic fight. Both men showed incredible heart, incredible desire, incredible technical ability as well. And we will inevitably go to the judges' scorecards. Brave Nation, what an incredible main event we had here. Give it up for both of these warriors in an amazing main event. After five rounds, we got the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored about a unanimous decision victory. And new Brave Combat Federation interim lightweight champion, Abdi Salam Amak Kupa.
your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is the mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and three losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.1 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. Please welcome Camille Magomedov. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 19 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Elas and fighting out of Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Put your hands together for the Brave Combat Federation interim lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Omuk Ulu Kuba Nitschbeck. For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Deki Larkin. Big thanks to our sponsor, MTS, Brave Nation. Camille Magomedov is in the black and red. Brave shorts, Abdi Salam, Omak, Ulu Kubinich back in white and red. Are you ready? Are you ready? Two top tier talents in global mixed martial arts. This is a proper treat for the fans. So finally match, both incredible grapplers. Magomedov, more of a submission specialist. Kubanichbek, a fantastic wrestler. Kubanichbek known for putting a Khabib level pressure Ooh. on his opponents. Can be the wrestling, can be submission threats, can be kicks, can be punches. Kubanichbek is tearing up that leg. Take time, Magomedov. Good work to close this distance, but Kuba and Ispek doing a great job. A beautiful work from Camille Magomedov, triangle the legs. Yeah. Those legs are shelved tight right now. Kuba Ispek can't get up, but it's going to hurt his face to do it. <laughs> oh, he's the way of giving up the back. Back yeah. take. You don't want to do that. for a hook. Magomedov does have four wins via rear naked choke. Oh, cheeky little fence grab. Magomedov looking hard for a mat return. Deggy Larkin keeping a very close eye on proceedings. Kubinichbek has his hips tight up against that fence, so the second hook cannot get in there. He's now trying to roll the hand over. He's got the bony part of his hip underneath those two hands. There's a solid, and he was able to do it. He's able to break those hands. Once he's successful in that, he'll look for an underhook. Michael Madoff, let's go with the leg lifts. Oh, a little fence grab from Kuban each back. Eats a big knee for his trouble. Three times. Cage grab from Kuban each back. I think if he does it again, Deggy Larkin could take a point. A point in a three-round fight, Brave Nation, is it a massive, massive deal. In a five-round fight, it's a little bit less. Fighters need to listen to the referee when they're told no longer grab, no longer grab. Again, to a certain extent, it is just instinct when you're in there, when you feel like you're falling to grab on the, the closest structure to you, but you can't do it in MMA. Michael Medoff, heavy, heavy pressure. Almost scores a secondary take on. And here comes that quick reversal. Nice work from Kuban each back. High pressuring Michael Medoff up against the cage. Beautiful giraffe fight right here that Kuban each back is coming out on top. He's using that head to push his opponent's head off the opponent's hips. Slowly trying to change levels, but nice work from Michael Medoff. Raising that level of Kuban each back, making the take down harder. Looking for the back now. Fully traded positions now. Kuban each back on the back of Camille Magomedov. Tables are turned. 
Oh, nice and back elbow for Magomedov. Did not land clean, and unfortunately for him, it allowed his opponent to secure an even better grip from back. But Inchbeck now dragging his opponent down. It looks like it's sheer force, but it's a lot of leverage here. Kicking that base out, driving towards the hand, which is the weak link here. Oh, again, trying to get that tick down. Both these fighters are so talented and so evenly matched. Again. Taking longer post for a break. So again, that's essentially a situation like that. I often compare it to what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Kubinich Beck, I hope we get to see him up against the fence again. Kubinich Beck was using nasty little heel strikes in the inner calf to unbalance his opponent. Trying to lead in with the uppercut to close the distance, and again, presses Kubinich Beck up against the cage. Final 30 seconds of the first round. I'd say both fires. Perhaps a little bit tentative in the first round, but it must be said this is the first of five rounds. Both fighters getting a little bit of a feel of each other, downloading that, so to speak. shots to finish him. Hugely, hugely, hugely smart for Abdi Salam. Kubanich back to throw those shots at the last second. Yep. I do believe that those judges may not have known who won that round with that last little flurry. He may have taken it. Very evenly contested round. And as you say, Kerrick, very intelligent MMA IQ there from Abdi Salam Kubanich back. Lands the big shots to finish the round. If there was a question mark about who won the round, Kuban Ichbek did something a little bit more forceful to, to perhaps give himself the edge. I think by the tiniest, tiniest fraction of a hair, Kuban Ichbek did win that one 10-9. Are we in agreement? I would say so, Kirik. Again, I expect it's almost like a, a Muay Thai fight. I expect to see the tempo gradually rise in this fight. Brave Nation, it's very hard to communicate what a five times five fight is like. Hold your hands up in front of your face. Try it for three minutes, it's exhausting. Try it for five minutes, it's worse. Have somebody punching you and kicking you as hard as they can while you're doing the same. That's one five minute round. These warriors are doing five times five. Abdi Salam Kubanich Bay takes the center of the Brave Arena. Again. Trying to punch his way into the pocket, secure the body lock, and so far, Camille Magomedov has been showing great takedown defense. Excellent defense from Magomedov. With that hip, chin into the hip, keep his opponent. Not nice upright. Nice work to get the separation there from Magomedov. As sometimes happens when both fighters change levels at the same time. Kuban Ichbek is an absolute master of his craft. Such a spoiler. I mean that with the greatest respect. He prevents his opponents from doing what they want to do. Completely incapacitates them. He is a master of relentless attack. It can be stomping on your foot. Yep. It can be heel kicking the back of the calf. Pushing with the head, looking for that back body lock, taking the back fully. If there's a separation, it's going to punches and then boom, in on the hips. And Kirik, for, for people watching that, that may not be practitioners of any kind of martial art themselves but are fans of the sport, can you describe just how tiring this type of a fight is on both fighters? I think luckily for both of them, Dickie Larkin separated them, but this is the greatest single test of strength in mixed martial arts. You put two people up against the cage, the stronger fighter is going to end up pushing the other one. Michael Mello doing the right thing by re-establishing himself in the center. He needs to get his back off the cage. Doing well to move laterally. Oh. 
Gloves wasn't far away with a kick to the head. Landed more so on the body. A little bit higher. Would have been interesting. You can see Margot Medov does not want to be a static target for any length of time. Always moving. Big take down by Kuban. Kuban each peg. Keep him down. From each peg, foregoing that shelving of the legs that the Dagestani fighters essentially invented in mixed martial arts. Trying instead to drag his opponent down right from the side, land some punches to the head. Magomedov doing a great job to get back to his feet, but the dangerous thing when you're fighting some of that Kuban each peg, as soon as you get back to your feet, there's a very real possibility you can end up back down again. Brave Nation, no single thing Kubanich Beck does is completely devastating. It's the accumulation of them. Imagine you're outside, a single little hailstone falls on your head. It's not so bad. 5,000 of them fall on your head. It's so bad. What's going on right now? It's so bad. This kind of relentless attack is the very definition of misery. Each bitch getting ever closer, we, to, he hits the jab and then steps in with the uppercut. I think he's, he's identified that Magomedov is changing levels to try and negate, defend the takedown. Nice side legs, big knee right up the middle. Phenomenal little switch to Muay Thai, beautiful timing by Camille Magomedov. Times that jump knee, puts his opponent flat on his back. That is the issue with the, the more dynamic striking attempts in mixed martial arts. If it doesn't come off for you, usually you find yourself in the worst position. Got a hook in, Kubinich Beck is going to try and shake his opponent off. Slowly trying to work for the rear naked choke. He's gone palm to palm on it. He's underneath the chin, I think, Kira. He might go out there. This is danger. There is danger. There is danger. Kubanich Beck is hanging in, but for how long? He might go out here, Kira. This squeeze is absolutely brutal. Kuban needs He's surviving the oxygen. Who needs it? Wow. That was tighter than a duck's backside. Full mount position. What a way to finish the round for Michael Medov. Oh, big elbows. What a wild round, Brave Nation. Fights like that can be a little bit hard to score, but I'm going to call that one. 10-9 for Maga Madoff. Came very, very close with that choke and then finished it with a nasty elbow. See, there's the uppercut that Kuban Ichbek was trying to land. And Kirik, Kuban Ichbek has been in an incredibly deep choke. How could that potentially affect him moving forward? Is he going to be more depleted because that choke looked so, so deep. I thought he was going to go out. I think what he's going to have to do, Phil, is be just a little bit more careful. I don't think he quite appreciated the extraordinarily high level of submission skill possessed by Kamil Magomedov. He knows it now. He knows he was literally Brave Nation a split second away from going to sleep. Unfortunately, I think he's going to have to ramp back just a little bit on that relentless attack. He's in mixed martial arts. If your opponent knows what you're going to do, it is a big, big, big demerit against you. Third round of five, and what has been a fantastic main event so far. What has been a fantastic Real Combat Federation show. Kuban each bit puts the pressure on right from the get go. It also has to be said, we've talked about how much that choke took out of Kuban Ichbek, but how much might it potentially have taken out of the arms of Camille Magomedov? 
Brave Nation, there's a psychological effect where if you think you've got your opponent finished, whether it's with a submission or with strikes, you can actually expend so much energy and feel so excited that when that excitement is gone, your body's tired, it can leave you in a genuinely depleted state. It's gonna be a scramble here. Magomedo thinking about a knee bar. Not just that. Oh, that is in place. The hips are too high by, oh, by, they're off too low, yeah, too high, excuse me. They're just so close. Maybe a transition to a heel hook. Oh, that's getting tighter. The angle's not quite right again. Oh. Off by a couple of centimeters. Oh, Kuba needs back. is one of the toughest men in mixed martial arts. A lesser leg would break right there. Scramble coming, who's going to end up on top? Magomedov, a triangle attempt. Magomedov did a great job to defend that. That's twice he's been close with submissions. Another big take time from Kubanich Bay. Really good fight so far. Less than halfway through this round, Brave Nation. Kuban each back landing. Some big shots. Trying to open up some little pockets of space to advance his position. That's one hook in. And rolls. Body triangle. Very smart work from Kuban each back. This body triangle, Brave Nation, is tough on the conditioning. It's very hard to breathe in this position, and it's hard to escape from. Magomedov does the right thing by rolling to the side that it's locked on, but then Kuban each back brings him back to the other side. Denied. Lovely work to lace up the leg as well with his end step. Oh, what a change in tempo this would be if, if Kubanichbek scored the submission. Chokes on the chin right now. Hurts, not typically a fight ender. Nice work from Kubanichbek to reassert the triangle. And once again, credit to cranking that face. Oh, just face squishing. Uh, can't be nice, but credit to the fans here in Serbia. Very well educated on the sport. It's a warrior culture full of amazing people. Amazing kindness, amazing cuisine, amazing hospitality, and amazing fighters. The Serbians, a great bunch of lads. And such a back and forth fight. If you are a fan of the purity of mixed martial arts, then you are loving this battle between the interim champion Kuban Ichbek and the challenger Kamil Magomedov. Phil, I believe psychologically, Kuban Ichbek wants to try and sink the same submission. He wants to try and get that rear naked choke just to prove to his opponent anything you can do, I can do better. Magomedov trying, oh he's got his finger inside the glove, Deki Larkin spots it, that's why he's one of the best in the business. Brave Nation, you can grab the opponent's gloves but your fingers cannot loop inside of it. Right in front of us here in our broadcast position, you can see Kubanichbek slowly, methodically trying to work, trying to get bicep grip but being well defended so far. He's never quite underneath the chin, more on the chin. So when it's back, maintaining the dominant position, but Karen, you also have to ask the question of how much this holding that body triangle, could that potentially take? A little bit like the legs of Kuban Ichbek. For a normal human being, yes. For Omar, <laughs> no. <laughs> Phil, I like Kuban Ichbek 10-9 in that round. You agree or you won't argue? I'd be inclined to agree with you. I wouldn't argue with you because you've probably forgotten more about mixed martial arts than I could ever hope to know. They've been close, close rounds each time. Round one, round two, I put a question mark. There's the first time. Even though it was extremely close, I did not put a question mark down. There was that. That was a close close knee bar attempt.
Here we see the relentlessness of Omak in action. No single thing he does is devastating, but in accumulation, it's devastating. Phil Magomedov looking just a little bit more fatigued in that corner than his opponent. I think being in that back body triangle for a good part of the round left him feeling a little bit depleted. Kubinich back looks hungry. <laughs> He's good to go, isn't he? Such a tightly contested con uh, such a tightly contested fight we have here. Both fighters have definitely had their moments. You can make compelling arguments for either. Brave Nation, we are now in championship rounds. We are now in deep waters. Doing what you're watching in front of you requires a whole nother level of conditioning. Kubanichbek believes, rightly or wrongly, that his condition is superior. Watch out for the potential for a choke. Nope. Oh, Kubanichbek just effortlessly slips to take the back. Beautiful back take. Well, makes it look effortless. There's a lot of effort going on. Looking for that man return. Hard to get. He is trying to work that left leg in. That was a nice takedown. Not only did it destabilize opponent's balance, but it hurt that calf as well. On hook in, trying to work for that other hook. And with the reverse half guard position. Oh, there's scramble time. Um, a great work by Michael Meadow to reverse the position. Phenomenal scramble. Brave Nation, close fights are very often won in the scrambles, and right there, Kamil Magomedov, he won that scramble. Kubanichbek trying to break the grip right now, doing the right thing. Magomedov doing a good job of attacking the legs when he's there. It may look like little shots, but the accumulation of those on the potentially tired legs of Kubanichbek. Yeah, reversal of positions here. As we referenced earlier, Brave Nation, fighters fighting up against a fence like this is the purest test of strength. And we're seeing here who the stronger fighter is. Good head fight here from Kubanichbek. Trying to drop the level. May switch to a low angle. Oh, beautiful. Scramble there, could have been a submission attempt, could be another one. Potential for a nice level up kick there from Magomedov. I believe the knees are were up just slightly as they are now. They try and roll for a leg here. Trying to set up the triangle, Kirik. Triangle potential here, head has to be well controlled first or it'll be passed readily. Smart pass from Kuban each back. So evenly balanced. Kubanich Beck riding a 12 fight on beaten streak, dating all the way back to February 2018. 28 years old. He's only starting to begin to enter his athletic prime. Kubanich Beck by working inside the closed guard of Magomedov. Kubanich Beck's pace has slowed just slightly here. We'll let him away with it considering it's the fourth round of the lightweight title fight. Brave Nation. Toes are not allowed to stick inside the fence. You can place the sole of your foot on the fence, but your toes are not allowed to stick through. Kubanichbek right now just smothering the work of Magomedov. 
One of the keys to this ground and pound, Brave Nation, is head positioning. Omaka's keeping his head above his opponent's head. That's stopping a whole lot of techniques coming from bottom. Oh. That one sounded like a cricket bat on a watermelon. Kubat each back is completely unfazed by it. 30 seconds in our penultimate round. Another good up kick from Magomedov. Maybe trying to switch to an arm bar. The arm's safe. Kubat each back. Grind and pound being landed here again. Being definitive in the end of the round. Kuban each back. Magomedov has done a tremendous job of keeping himself relatively safe. Has not taken any big shots. But that approach to mixed martial arts requires your opponent to make a mistake that you take advantage of definitively. That has not happened. Let's Phil have a look at this replay that we're seeing courtesy of MTS. Camille Magomedov did a great job to reverse the position, but again, it's just it's such a beautifully technical fight character. You see just how talented both men are, how, in, how high their MMA IQ is. Right now, Kuban Ichbek is potentially just edging it. That said, the, the flow of play here was such that he cannot assume he's well ahead. He's got to go right. out there and fight this round as if winning this round will win the fight for him, because that could be the case. And he's got to dance with a gallop rung to him. He can't switch his game up. He's had very good luck the last two rounds with his usual relentless pace. He's got to keep it up, but he's got to be careful. If he makes a mistake for a split second, he can get tapped out. He can even get knocked out. Potentially, and I'm saying this with my commentary ahead on, as I'm, I'm not judging the fight professionally here tonight, but Camille Magomedov may need a finish if he, if he wants to win this fight. It would be wise for his corner to assume that and tell him to go for it. He's got the skills to do it, Phil. He's got an amazing background in Taekwondo, can throw kicks out of nowhere. The strikes are great, wrestling's great, and of course the submissions are supreme. This is what he does not want Kuban Ichbek to do. Good separation from Magomedov. Beautiful reversal, there may be, there may be a little, have an eye poke? I think he might have slept on some moisture. Not quite sure what the protestation was there from Camille Magomedov. Was not clear from our table. That Larkin told him to fight on, and they are fighting on. Big take time from Kubanich back. You'd said, Phil, being pushed up against the cage is not where he wants to be. Being pushed up against the cage when he's in bottom guard is even more so. Not where he wants to be. He wants to be looking for a stand up here. Credit to Magomedov, he's trying to make something happen to create the angle for himself. Hey, they try and work the armbar here. I was getting close to an armbar. But again, Kuban Ichbek just does not give his opponents any kind of space with which to work. Suffocating, draining game plan. Head on triangle position, but too close to the cage. Magomedov trying to roll, trying to create space, but Kuban Ichbek sticking to him like white on rice. Nice little hammer fist from bottom by Camille Magomedov. As I said, he's keeping himself relatively safe, using brilliant jujitsu, throwing a lot of shots from bottom, having luck with some of them at the beginning of an armbar there, potentially. Midway point of the fifth and final round. Trying to dive on that Kimura grip. Kimura can, can, can be used as a sweep, can be used as a submission, can be used to stand up. 
Kuba needs picks, stay in active, Martin shots. He won there at the stage of a fight just how much. Love Magomedov attacking from bottom. Actually giving better than he gets. Decky Larkin said avoid the spine. Brave Nation, imagine a cell phone. You run it all the way down the center of the back. That area cannot be hit. Camille Magomedov wants to take that arm off. Take it home with him. Not successful thus far. Has had some great work with that up kick. It really is do or die now for Camille Magomedov. Needs to do something definitive. And by definitive, I mean fight ending. Not as moment, but realistically for me, Kirik, the turning point in the fight was the rear naked choke attempt from Camille Magomedov. As you say, sometimes psychologically, when you feel you're that close to your finish, it's hard to, to refocus and get yourself back into that mind frame. It happens with striking when you're ground and pounding a fighter and you think you finished him and you don't. Very, very tough to bounce back from psychologically. It's even more true when you get a submission, even more true when that submission appeared to me to be completely sunk. Final 30 seconds in the championship for Kuban back on top. Kudos, Phil, to both these fighters for the conditioning they're showing. They're still aggressively in here. Ten seconds now, Brave Nation. Has Abdi Salam Ulu Kuban each back broken the lightweight curse? There's only one way to find out. Kirik, sum up that incredible fight between two absolute warriors. In one word, Phil, wow. <laughs> Those two warriors wowed me. We're now getting a replay courtesy of MTS. Once those hands, Brave Nation, are gripped together at the top of the hamstrings, a uh, takedown is almost sure to follow. And when you've got Kubanich back on top of you, a ground and pound is sure to follow. But Camille Magomedov throwing, I think he was throwing nastier knees from bottom than the punches he was receiving from top. And reviewed. Carlos Kramer is going to enter the Brave Combat Federation cage and let us all know who is the Brave Combat Federation undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Apologies for that brave wait, brief wait, Brave Nation. But we got a lion stalking into the cage. Carlos Kramer. Make it official for us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a fight for our main event of the evening. After five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 49-46. Your next judge scores about 49-46. And your third judge scores about 48-47. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and still, the undisputed Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Omok Ulu Kuban And now, Brave Nation, it's time for the main event of the evening.
presented by our global partner, Green Hill, and Al Azad Jewelry. This main event is sanctioned by the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation and its president, Mohammed Kamber. Your three judges for this bout are Sharif Babu, Shireen Strauss, and Kevin David. Your referee in charge of the action is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Two warriors are ready to collide inside the Brave CF 77 Arena. Brave Nation, don't blink for this one. This will be absolute fire. Our main event of the evening. Five, five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Two men enter, only one leaves with his arm raised in victory. Who comes out on top in this amazing main event? It's time to find out. Brave Nation, let's introduce our two main event warriors. Can you feel the thunder? It's time to be brave. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. To all those watching in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation, are you ready? Introducing your first word, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 22 wins and six losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing Team Lucas Mediano and fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Welcome the former Brain Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Lucas Miniero Martin. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 20 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.9 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Eos and fighting out of Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Put your hands together for the reigning undisputed Brain Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Olo. Ulu Kuban For referee instructions, it's the band, Decky Larkin. Hi, right, gentlemen, you've been over the rules. This is my instructions all the time. If I tell you stop, you stop and break clean. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Let's go. Big thanks to our silver sponsor, Yusuf bin Ahmed Kanu. Deggy Larkin, the best in the business, is your man in the middle for this main event battle scheduled for five five-minute rounds. Sure these are two guys who are at the top of their game in the lightweight division. What we're going to see here, Brave Nation, is pressure facing pressure. Each one is looking for an opening. Somewhere where the opponent is weak, nobody's found it yet. Could be, could be takedowns, could be distance, could be strikes, kicks. They're each looking for it. They're fainting, fainting, waiting for the other person to react in some predictable, some repeatable fashion. Lucas Miniero does have an unbelievable kicking game. If he can take out that lead leg, of Kuban each bet. Nice little shovel uppercut. Constant movement is what Lucas Minero needs. Can't find himself prone or static, or he will get taken down. That is potentially the cleanest shot that Abdi Salam Ulu Kuban each bet has absorbed in Brave Combat Federation. He blinked Brave Nation, but that is just about it. A beautiful shot to the body. What typically follows that is a shot to the head and then back down to the body again. Just sneaked it right underneath the elbow. Nice uppercut, pinged the head back momentarily of Minero. Former shoot box fighter. 
really is entering the third and final act of his career and he wants to go out with a bang. He wants one last run at the title. Concentration, grit on these two fighters' faces is supreme. If either of them loses concentration for a split second, a third of a second, a quarter second, and it's going to be lights out. Eyes are wide, taking in every tiny movement. That uppercut is money for Cuban. Each peg is the starting point for a lot of his attacks. It's the genesis for what he wants to do next. It's a little herky-jerky, it's a little bit awkward, but it is landing. Oh, that's a big shot from Cuban each peg. Midway point of the opening round, fast approaching. Kuban Hitchbeck is hanging in there with the hands. I don't think anybody would have predicted this carry. Kuban Hitchbeck is absolutely finding a home for those hands and having had success with it, what does he do? Changes gears, looks for the legs, has taken the back now. This is quintessential Oma fighting style. He is relentless attacking from all angles, all heights, through all means. Trying to pick the leg. Good job by Minero to defend. He pops off a shot of his own. That's going to be huge for Minero, the fact that he was able to defend the take down. Massive feather in his cap thus far. But it's a huge shot. He wobbled him. Minero has a habit of when he gets hit or rocked, he tries to fire back immediately. But in doing so, he puts himself into danger. Kubanichbek, it feels, Phil, like he's got his opponent's. He's got it. He does, he does. He's got his opponent's number right now. That's it. There's the takedown. Great job of shelving the legs. And I said it before, I do not think that each bed was born. I think he was made in a lab somewhere. Trying pan to fire. We got both hooks in. Heavy pressure on those hips on the kidney. 90 seconds to work. Flatten them out. Deep, deep pressure. Cuban Eastbeck needs to be wary of hitting the back of the head. This could be we it. Down the it may be short time. There it is. It is. It. Wow, no protestation from Lucas Minero. He knows it was a fantastic stoppage. Great nation, when those hips sink down and the feet lift up, the opponent's legs, his thighs are forced higher than the hips. It's tough to breathe. It's, it's impossible to move. And without breathing, without being able to move, shots start to land down. Excellent stoppage from the Bandit Decky Larkin. And what an extraordinary performance from Abdi Salam, Ulu, Oma, Kuba, Nietzschek. just what it means to him and to, to take out the former champion in such a fashion. This only serves to, to really enhance the reputation of Abdi Salam Ulu Kuban Ichbek. And Kirik, there is not going to be a lot of people lining up to fight this man. When his name is being proposed to other people, I cannot see a lot of hands going up. And Phil, in cursed fashion, the Brave CF lightweight title curse has survived. Since the first Brave CF champion, 155 pound Open the Zaitar, decided to climb to defend his title, no title holder has been able to successfully defend that belt. A Zaitar refused to fight. Lucas Monero and Luan Santiago faced for the interim belt. Lucas won it big. Open continued to refuse Monero. Brave fired Zaitar, promoted Lucas to undisputed, but in his first defense to the Brazilian succumbed to Abdul Karim Al Sawadi. The Palestinian wrestler was then knocked out by Luan Santiago, who became the new champion. But his reign was short-lived, as he was submitted by arch-rival Clayton Renato Silva just a few months later. Silva was then knocked out by Amin Ayub, who relinquished the title of his first defense for Ahmed Amir. The Egyptian Bahraini status is inactive. Brave CF fighter became unclear at which point the promotion moved forward and decided to crown a new champion. After Kubanichbek was unfairly robbed of a win against Clayton Silva in an interim title fight, he won the provisional belt by beating Olyas Eskarayev and unified against Kamil Megamedov, becoming the new lineal lightweight champion of the world. And now, due to a missed weight, it has happened again. The Brave CF lightweight curse endures. But the great Abdi Salam Ulu Omar Kumanichbek rises only higher.
All right, Brave Nation. This main event comes to a dramatic end at three minutes and 39 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, the Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion, Addison.